Hello family members, I hope you're having a nice day today. I have something I'd like to talk to you about that I think uh, a lot of people have a, a pretty strong opinions about family. <laughs> um, especially in, in the queer community, family can be a pretty complicated topic, you know. Uh, some people's family is affirming, some people's family is not affirming, but there's also the element of having children or not having children as a queer person. You know, um, it, the idea of what a queer person is or a queer person's family is, is, is so so different now than it, it has been in past generations. And I don't know, I just find that kind of fascinating. You now there's the element of found family, you know, where uh, queer people often, um, especially if they don't have affirming family, uh, cr create their own family units, um, you know, mentor figures or sibling-like figures or um, any number of different types of relationships that you can have. And, and I think that that versatility in how our relationships work is sort of essential to explaining why queer people exist. Like, I sincerely believe that the reason that we exist, that, that uh, one of the types of people that you can see in society are queer people is because we fit into different voids in family units. You know, um, the aunties like me <laughs> or uh, uncles that don't have children that get to, you know, sort of have that sort of magical mentorish but not parental relationship, you know. It's it's important I think for kids to have relationships with adults that aren't their parents, you know. I think it it helps them understand that there are different kinds of adults in the world, not just one kind of adult, you know. And I mean, I think it, it kind of bears itself out. If you look at it statistically, um, at least in men, I don't know if it's the same in women, but um, the the more brothers a, a, a guy has born before him, the higher the uh, odds are that he'll be gay. And so in that circumstance... It makes sense that, you know, when there's a large family group that's going to have a lot of children, a lot of, you know, work to do in their community, that maybe there would be a reason to have somebody who is unlikely to have genetic offspring in the, you know, gene pool. Uh, because we forget that you know, humans aren't individuals. We are a society. We're a population. And so what benefits the population as a whole is, is likely to be selected for in, in communities and in our biology, right? And so, you know, for me, for example, I just, I always knew that I wasn't going to have biological children just did not seem right to me. And, you know, I think that my aromanticism kind of goes along with that, right? You know, um, I, I kind of thought that I'd end up maybe like fostering or adopting or something like that, but that didn't really pan out. But what I have ended up doing is I'm a godmother and I have my goddaughter come stay with me over the summers. You know, I've, I've done that every summer since she turned 10. And this is going to be our third summer. Yeah. And, and <laughs> tomorrow evening, my, my baby gets here and, and I go back into sort of anti-mom mode, you know. Because 
summertime momming is not the same as school time momming. I don't, I don't want to, uh, give myself more credit than I deserve here, but you know, like taking care of a kid when you don't have to make her do homework or anything is, is a lot different than when she's uh, able to do basically what she wants for the summer. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I had that, you know, place in my heart for her. And that has been beneficial to our family because, you know, she's been in our lives. You know, I was there at the hospital the day she was born. My my mom came and saw her like the day after she was born. Um, she's been visiting my parents and calls them grandma and grandpa, you know, all of her life. And, uh, you know, my, my parents didn't have their first biological grandchild until, you know, just a few years ago. So they, they had her <laughs> to lavish attention and her, and her sister to lavish attention on in the meantime, while we were waiting <laughs> for my brother to get with it. Right. And, um, then my, my friend, the, my goddaughter's mother, uh, has basically no biological family. Her, her parents have passed away. She was raised as an only uh, child, you know, she didn't have any like relationship with any extended family. She's sort of alone in the world. And, um, my parents and I are sort of her family. You know, like she talks to my mom probably more than I talk to her, you know, <laughs> like they, they're family, you know, and, and I think part of the reason why I chose to make her part of my family is because of my romanticism, because to me, like, Close relationships are never romantic, right? And the next best thing is familial. And so I kind of like, when I, I form relationships, I, I create these found families. I have people who have definitely been sort of <laughs> incorporated into my family as a result of the relationships I have with them but they're, they're my own special type of relationship. You know, maybe they're QPRs or maybe they're something QPR adjacent, you know, but like my queer platonic relationships are how I kind of add to my family and my goddaughter is, is like the apex of that. She's like our, our little princess, you know, <laughs> I can't wait till she's here. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm nervous too, but you know, I'm excited. <laughs> but family is really important. And, and the thing is, even if family is a, a bad thing for queer people, even if it has negative connotations to them, there's still this, um, outsized influence that those family relationships have on them and how they view the world, you know? And with, with queer people, you know, we just, our relationships, we can't take for granted the way that, you know, heteronormative people do, you know, uh, there's assumptions of how, family dynamics work and with us those assumptions just never hold true they're just you can't really assume all of us are so different all of our circumstances are so different all of our families are so different you know uh, it's obviously not that big a deal anymore to see uh, kids raised by two gay parents you know like, you see that fairly frequently. I mean, heck, they even had, uh, on Modern Family, they had uh, 
a family that was like that, you know, in a sitcom years ago. So it's it's something that, you know, people see kids can be raised like that and it's it doesn't mean anything, really. You know, they can grow up to be whatever kind of person they were going to be, no matter who their parents were, you know. <laughs> But having two loving parents is usually a good thing for children. You know, I, I honestly think having as many loving adult family members who are willing to support a child better, you know, like aunts and uncles and uh, honorary aunts and honorary uncles and godmothers and godfathers and, you know, I mean... It they we have this weird thing that's been done to us societally. We had this you know conservative idea that there is no society, that there's only individuals or families, and by families they mean like nuclear families, you know, mom, dad, and kids. And that's just not true. That's that's so unnatural. That's just not how humans work. You know, like, <laughs> we're, we are, are social animals. We are meant to work as communities. We're meant to work as villages. We're meant to work as groups, as cities, as collectives. You know, uh, individual human action doesn't really mean much because Anything that is invented, any idea that we have is built on the ideas of people and the inventions of people that came before us. You know, nothing we do is in a vacuum. Nothing is uh, without, that's not informed by what's gone before and what other people think and have thought, you know? And this weird disconnect where they have to try to pretend like it's natural or normal for humans to fit into very uh you know clearly prescribed roles is just silly like those roles feel good for you and that's fine live your life the way you want to live but don't think that everyone else is going to have the same experience as you what feels normal and natural for you does not feel normal and natural for me or vice versa. You know, <laughs> like the idea of having children, I love children, but the idea of like physically bearing a child being pregnant just does not feel like it would be right. It does not feel right to me. And it's not because I don't like kids or have a mothering instinct. It's just that's not what's right for me. But I also know that it is what's right for a lot of other people, that it's extremely fulfilling for other people. I mean, I remember my sister-in-law before she get, got married, just devastated because the career path that she wanted to be on um, really wasn't conducive with being a young mother and that's what she really wanted to do now she ended up being a mo young mother anyway <laughs> but um and having the career she's having a pretty amazing career path too so don't ever let, it, let anyone try to tell you can't have what feels right to you because you can but it does take a village it takes you know, her mom comes and visits and helps out. My mom goes and visits and helps out. Uh, you know, she has a, a really unique career path that she's taken and that she's like doing grant work remotely with her old college professor. And, you know, I mean, like all sorts of cool stuff. Like that that's the thing. Um, it, there's just not one right way to do things. And... Her common sense told her that the right way to do things would be to finish all of her school and get her career established and then have children, but she didn't have to do that, you know? And that wasn't what she ultimately wanted. And so I'm glad that she didn't end up having to, to try to live her life the way that someone else thinks that she needs to, you know? And... 
you know, I think it's wonderful if people want to be, you know, parents. I think it's wonderful if they think I, that's not right for me. I wouldn't be a good parent. I can't really commit and and be honest with themselves enough to say that. You know, like, I, I don't think that, that people like that get as much respect as they deserve. Because quite frankly, knowing that you wouldn't be a good parent and, you know, avoiding that pressure to be normal, I, I think that it's pretty amazing when people do that, you know? Because children deserve wonderful parents. They deserve parents who want them. And not everybody wants kids. So I think it's great when people are self-aware enough to say, hey, you know, that's just not me. For whatever reason, you know? Uh, I feel like we need to accept that everyone in our community is going to live their life a little bit differently than everyone else. And that's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> like, humans are like this on purpose, you know? Uh, as Lady God, uh, Gaga says, you know, God don't make no mistakes, right? You know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, we're, we're each our own little unique puzzle uh, piece that makes the whole picture that is humanity, that makes the whole picture that is our community, that makes the picture that is our family. And none of us have to fit in to that larger picture in the same way. Some of us are corner pieces, some of us are edge pieces, some of us are center pieces. You never know, you know? And I think that the queer community is able to have that flexibility in the way that strictly heteronormative people struggle with, you know? So I think that, that we're an asset to society and to family and I think it's incredibly uh, insulting that conservatives want to try to put us in opposition to society or to family because we're, we're not, we're not not part of society. We're not outsiders here. We are an integral part of society and by trying to keep us out, you are hurting yourself as well as you're hurting us because our existence benefits society as a whole and every single person is part of society as a whole and therefore our existence benefits everyone. And so ignoring us or trying to pretend we don't exist or trying to convince us that we're wrong about who we are is just pointless and uh, people should stop doing it, you know? <laughs> so that's what I got for you. Uh, now, as I said, I, I do have my goddaughter come in tomorrow evening. And so I don't know if I'll be making as many videos uh, once she's here, you know, uh, I'm going to prioritize given what, energy I have to her, of course. Um, so if you don't hear from me as much after tomorrow, <laughs> don't worry. I'm just, um, I'm being anti. I, I had to shift from being my anti Elaine on YouTube to anti Elaine in person a little bit. And, uh, thank goodness for that. Cause oh man, I miss her. <laughs> All right. Take care of yourself, family members. And, uh, you know, appreciate the family that you have, whatever form it takes, you know. Uh, people don't have to be biologically related to you to, to be part of your family. And uh, 
people who are biologically related to you that you get along with and you treasure, that's uh, uh, amazing, you know, great. I have, I have, I'm happy for you. <laughs> so um, be happy with, with, with uh, the life that you've built with yourself, for yourself, because you know what? You're awesome. Take care. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>